Hi, this is Leslie Ravenscroft. I'm lucky enough to be Senko at William Brooks School. And here is our SEN information report and policy for 2014. Some of you may be aware that there was a new code of practice that came into force on the 1st of September this year. We take our inspiration from the legal guidelines enclosed in that report. So it's based, our policy is based on the following principles. We want to involve children, parents and young people in decision making. Children, young people and their families should be given enough information and have a say around their SEM provision is a priority for us. We also aim for collaboration across education, health and social care. This should be led and coordinated by the LEA. And we also want to help in transition. Transition for adulthood is obviously very important, but we also want to make sure that transition at other important times, like from year 6 to 7 and year 9 to 10, is very much supported at William Brooks. We embrace the principles from the guidance from Shropshire Council that all children and young people are entitled to an education that enables them to make progress so that they can achieve their best, become confident individuals and lead fulfilling lives. We want to make a successful transition into adulthood. William Brooks School is committed to student support. We have roughly a thousand students on roll at William Brooks and we want all our students to make good progress and we believe that all teachers are teachers of students with SEN support or disability. William Brooks endeavours to identify, monitor and put interventions into place to foster student support in the four areas of need. These are communication and interaction, cognition and learning difficulties, social, emotional and mental health and sensory and or physical development. And there are separate videos to discuss each of these in more detail on the website. We believe in equal opportunities and we aim to meet the physical, emotional and intellectual needs of all students. So some people may need a bit of extra support for a short period, some people may need extra support for a longer period. We are committed to providing that support. All our students are fully integrated into the life of the school, both in lessons and other activities, and we recognise individual strengths as well as their support needs. We absolutely believe in these principles from Section 100 of the duty to support pupils with medical conditions. Pupils at school with medical conditions should be properly supported so they have full access to education, and this includes school trips and physical education. We seek specialist advice from agencies such as sensory inclusion and occupational therapists wherever necessary. Governing bodies must ensure that arrangements are in place to support schools, pupils at school with medical conditions. Governing bodies should ensure that the school leaders consult health and social care professionals, pupils and parents to ensure the needs of children with medical conditions are effectively supported. Out of September 2014, we have 45 students on the list of those with support needs or disabilities at SEN support or above. 32 of our students have statements of special educational needs. Over the next 12 months, the LEA is looking to transfer all of these to education, health and care plans. 100 of our students are being monitored extra carefully by teachers due to some barriers to learning, such as dyslexia or dyspraxia. While all teachers are teachers of students with support needs, we also have a lot of in-house expertise upon which to draw. We have two specialist teachers, a trained counsellor, two higher level teaching assistants, four student support officers, eight department teaching assistants and eight special support assistants. The difference between a department teaching assistant is that they will often have a degree or higher qualification in the subjects in which they support. For instance, our history teaching assistant has a degree in history. They are based within the department. Special support assistants are more to do with one-to-one -one support for specific emotional and mental needs. When in Brook School, we aim to consult with parents and carers before their children start at secondary school. We can arrange for private consultations on our open evening in October. Our staff attend Year 6 annual reviews and we arrange meetings to liaise with class teachers of children with SEN in Year 6. 
We also invite parents and the children to these meetings. We arrange additional visits as necessary for students in Year 6 before the two-day introduction visits in July that every child has. Key workers also meet intensively with the parents of high-needs children and spend time with the children themselves at primary school to establish a good relationship before the children actually come to, to William Brooks. We're committed to consulting with parents and carers while their children at William Brooks. I'm present at all parents' evenings and a priority appointment system is available for students with SEM. Target setting evenings also include um, a heavy SEN focus. We meet with the parents of students with SEN support three times a year. Our key workers send regular emails. This can vary depending on the needs of the child. Sometimes it's every day, sometimes it's two or three times a week, sometimes it's weekly. We hold options pre-meetings and transition meetings for post-16 provision for individual pupils. We're also hoping to establish a parents' working party to discuss SEN termly. William Brooks School also consults with the students themselves. We have individual interviews for annual review meetings, small social skills group, informal feedback at lunch times in games and homeworks club. Key workers are always aiming to ascertain the children's views, and review meetings do not take place without the student being present. We support Year 6 students in particular, as we know this is an anxious time for parents. Tutors and key workers are allocated to make, match the specific needs of the students. During the two-day induction, teaching assistants observe all the students and then meet to feed back what they've seen. Staff have up-to-date information from the Year 6 teachers, and our junior sports leaders work with the primary schools and local primaries are invited to our sixth form panto, so new students will have some familiar faces in the student body. There will be teaching assistants in every lesson for the students' first day at secondary school, and indeed, in September, the Year 7s are the only year group in school. After two weeks, classes may be redistributed to meet needs that have become apparent, and interventions will be established quickly, and students' progress in these will inform their SEN status. We're also committed to support students with support needs during the transition between Year 9 and Year 10. All Year 9 students with statements, or ECHPs, have a careers interview before their annual review. For students without statements, option pre-meetings with myself and parents are held where necessary. All Year 9 students who have been on the SEN list are tested during the academic year for extra help during exams, such as readers, scribes, using a laptop, and extra time. We may need to get advice from outside agencies such as occupational therapy or sensory inclusion. And a differentiated Key Stage 4 curriculum can give additional time for overlearning or one-to-one -one support by reducing the GCSE load. We're also committed to supporting our students as they move on from William Brooks. All Year 11 students with statements or ECHPs have a careers interview. Representatives from local colleges, training providers are invited to the Year 11 reviews and information about support needs and exam help is emailed to colleges. Time is given in school to complete application forms and extra visits can be arranged to look at post-16 providers. Students who have statements, ECHPs or are as SAN support, have three meetings a year with parents, tutors, students, a teacher and a member of the SEN staff. This discussion should include whether more or less support is necessary to make sure a student feels safely supported without becoming over-dependent upon support. For instance, wherever possible, we'd move from one-to-one -one support assistance to departmental TAs when a student moves into Year 10. We've provided quite a lot of training for our staff. Loss and bereavement, anxiety, self-harm, anger management, social stories. These are unpacking day-to-day -day events using cartoons and think bubbles to try and get people to think about the possible impact of their words and actions. Attachment disorder, hearing impairment, L-clan, visual impairment, occupational therapy. We also looked at specific learning difficulties such as dyslexia, dyspraxia and dyscalculia, working with autism and providing readers and scribes for exams fairly. 
We also work with a number of external agencies. We hope that you can discuss issues with myself and come to a mutually satisfactory conclusion. I'm generally available on email. However, if there is a dispute that cannot be thusly satisfied, please follow the link from our website to the school complaints procedure. This is the graduated approach for children and young people with special needs in Shropshire. You can see it starts off with universal provision. Access to high quality teaching with differentiation is included in this universal provision. So for instance, students with mild dyslexia should have differenti differentiated provision as part of the universal class teaching. Targeted and special services for SEN support might include occupational therapy, speech therapy, social care. Children who have got complex and acute needs may need some very high support. These are quite rare in Shropshire. We don't know where Shropshire is publishing its local offer. They're still working on it. But this is the URL of the um, SEN reforms from Shropshire's point of view. Also, we don't know how the personal budgets will be allocated. A personal budget will only be available if your child has a statement ECHP for very high needs. There are organisations that help parents. Parent Partnership is a brilliant service. Their web page is here and their telephone number is here. They're an independent service that will help and support you and are there for parents to make sure parents can get the best deal for their children. Thank you for listening.